Good morning. So our reading today is from Genesis, the second chapter. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. In the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, when no plant of the field was yet in the earth, and no herb of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was no one to till the ground. But a stream would rise up from the earth, and water would face of the ground. When the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden. In the east, there he put the man whom he had formed. Out of the ground, the Lord God made up to grow every tree that is pleasant and is good sight for good food. The tree of life also is in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. A river flows out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divides and becomes four branches. The name of the first branch is Bashan. It is one that flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is Delium, and ox stone are there. The name of the second river is Jahan. It is one that flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris, which flows out of Hosea, and the fourth is Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you do, you shall die. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called them, every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the cattle and to the birds of the air and to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was still no helper as his partner. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this, is, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. I invite the children forward for the children's message this morning. Hey, everybody. Have a seat. What's in this box? What's in it, Ella? It's a word. It's a word that we didn't say for the whole season of Lent, and now that it's Easter, we say it over and over. Our first song said the word 12 times. There's very few times when a song says the same word 12 times. Ella kept this for us, kept it safe for us, and Jack helped too. All of Lent. What's the word? Alleluia. Alleluia is a, is a word that we don't just say. We don't just say alleluia. How are we supposed to say Alleluia? How do you think? Not whispering. It's too big and too good of a word to whisper it. See, it, it's even up here on the banner, on the frontal. We yell Alleluia. But we're not allowed to yell in church, are we? Guess what we get to do today? 
we get to yell in church. We get to yell hallelujah, and we're going to have everybody join us, and we're going to see how loud of an hallelujah we can get, okay? We're going to start out, and we're going to start quiet, and we're going to get louder, and we're going to say it five times, and when we get to number five, we're going to be as loud as we can, because this means praise be to God, and it's not something that we're supposed to take light. It's God, we thank you for everything. And if we're really serious, we don't need to be quiet. We can be loud. God wants us to be joyful in church and have fun. It's not just about being quiet all the time, okay? That's a people thing. God has more fun than people, I think. Are you ready? One, two, three. Hallelujah. A little louder. Hallelujah. A little louder. Hallelujah. A little louder. Hallelujah and loudest. Hallelujah. Oh, that was a good one. I was a screamer back there. I heard it. I love it. That's what it's all about. We're supposed to be here and having fun and enjoying worship and thanking God for everything good in our lives. And that word is the epitome of thank you, praise be to God. It is the best word we can say. And we haven't said it all Lent. So now that we get to say it for Easter, I don't think there's a song we're going to sing that doesn't have that word in it. Thank you for keeping it safe. Yes? Nothing? All right, let's pray. God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to be ourselves in this place, for helping us to find joy in our lives. For everything that you have given us, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. When we speak hallelujah, we mean it from our heart. Praise be to you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Good job, everybody. Please rise for the gospel. The Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for the fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails in my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written 
so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. One of my childhood neighbors, David, who lived just a couple doors down, had a sandbox that we would play in regularly. Sand was always under the nails of our little fingers. It was one of the places where we got lost in joy in God's creation at least two, three times a week. First, we'd stomp down the sand really flat, pack it down nice and tight, and then stand back, and with eyes of an architect or an engineer, we would make plans for our coming creation. Our imaginations ran wild. At least three of us were there regularly. One was usually assigned to dig tunnels. For some reason, there were always tunnels. We'd lay down in the dirt and reach our arms as far as we could just to make sure those tunnels were always extra long. Another another one of us was usually building hills and holes, maybe pyramids and dams. Another moving the yellow tin construction toys around and making appropriate noises for the work site. After at least an hour, hour and a half, we'd all step back again and wonder at our creation. Toys and superhero figurines were carefully placed appropriately throughout the creation to get just the right aesthetic. A tree branch here or there, rocks crowning the mountaintops, and then to bring it all to life, we would inevitably grab the hose and fill the sandbox that we had dug out so carefully and watch a man-made river bring the whole scene to life. Hours of joy all for that one or two minutes of fun as that water of life enlivened the creation. We watched it change in ways that we could never have dreamt up, and we could not have been more proud to see what we had created with our own two hands. The second story of creation in Genesis that we read today from the southern kingdom gives us an image of God that we can all appreciate. Like a kid in the sandbox, God brings to life a new world. In this tradition, God is depicted in a very human-like way, like a kid having fun playing in the sandbox. There is divine joy and play in the creation. With the first human being, it is said that God got dirt under God's nails, forming Adam from the soil of the ground carefully molding and sculpting every little detail, God then took that figurine and breathed the breath of life into its nostrils, and the man became a living being. I can only imagine God, like us children, in the sandbox, looking at the creation in the pure delight at what was made. Now come alive. As we hear again, of the creation of this world in the Bible. We are supposed to take faith that we, you, me, all of us, are God's good creation in which God takes great delight. We are creations that God took joy in creating and continues to appreciate as our lives unfold. This is why this reading exists in the Bible. To help us learn who God is, who we are to God, and just how we fit in with everything that God has made. Now we might wonder sometimes why God puts up with us. But today, we are to grow in appreciation that God truly treasures us and is proud of creating us. God crafted us in love and fun with great hopes for us all. As our Father, God wants for us that same joy that God took in playing in the dirt, planting the garden and bringing it all to life. We learn in this story that God has been telling us from the very beginning to follow in this love of creation and to be caretakers of the earth. Our vocation is set in this chapter, in the Bible, as partners with God, 
in loving and caring for all in the sandbox. Human beings are to ensure that everything thrives. The plants, the animals, the soil itself from which we have come, that we are intrinsically linked to. From the beginning, God is prepared to entrust the garden to these special creatures, humans. We are expected, created in God's image, to share in God's work even as co-creators. And to top it all off, we are given divine permission to enjoy it just as much as God does. But we all know how we took advantage of that gift and have fallen short of our call to be the caretakers that God has made us to be. Some other time in church we'll discuss when we first messed it up, but we don't have to go that far back to realize this truth. We live in a world with ecological disasters that prove to us just how much we have taken advantage of this gift, even to our own harm. Sadly, we took our creative powers and perverted them into powers of destruction. Let me share with you a few of those ecological disasters, some so big that it would be a shame if we didn't bring them up so that we, as God's people, in our knowledge of them, can work to fix them like God asks of us. This isn't chump change with how bad we as the human race have messed things up. I mean, do you know that in the United States of America, there's a town named Centralia in Pennsylvania whose coal mines were set on fire in 1962 and that it still burns today? Like images of hell, smoke rises up through the cracks of the soil. Everybody who lived there had to move away. It was people, human beings that created that destruction of God's good creation. Or are you aware of the Aral Sea between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan? It was a body of water a little larger than Lake Michigan. Imagine Lake Michigan. Now completely dried up. The fishing boats are left like ghost ships in the middle of a desert that we created with our effort to take all that we could from God's good creation that God has shared with us. And then there's the things that we're so ashamed of that we redirect planes around the scars that humans have made in God's sandbox. One is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, made up of plastic that's beginning to look like its own continent now from space. Another is the mountaintop removal where we permanently scar the land. Our flight paths are created to keep us from these truths. It takes us longer to fly places just so that we can pretend that we are not destroyers of God's good earth, kicking it apart like the neighborhood bully. We figure if we just shut our eyes and ears tight enough, we can pretend that we don't really have a problem that needs to be dealt with yet. And for those tree huggers, we can set up a world where we just hide our sin. Now, it would be easy to think this is about destruction everywhere else, but the truth is, these things are right here in our own state. They're called super fun sites. Places where businesses who profited off of destroying God's good creation left a huge mess for us taxpayers to clean up. And if we don't, then we are just accepting of the fact that we are now going to live with places that release contamination that pose significant health and environmental risks. Things like cancer and lead poisoning. Do you know that we currently have 46 active Superfund sites right here in our home state of Wisconsin? They're as close as Cedarburg, Menominee Falls, and Milwaukee. All close enough to genuinely pose a risk to you, to me, and everybody that we love. With a list like this, some of them that we don't want to admit are true, it might be easy to lose hope. But that is what is such good news here that the creation story shares with us, that the Bible gives us in our lives. The secret that some don't know is that when God commissioned us to be the caretakers of God's creation, God also equipped us with the gifts that we need to make a difference. 
We have the divine spark, God's own breath, God's own spirit breathed inside of us. And we are able to bring back to life things that others would give up on. We have each other. Partners that God gave us in this work too. We have a generation that's starting to come out of college right now with a passion for this stuff and enough knowledge to make the change in this world that we don't even know needs to change. And together we have proven over and over again just how much we can do together in Jesus' name. And we have God, too, don't forget that, who wants everything to thrive. And God's creating hand is still among us to push and pull things back into its place. God is still a player in the sandbox. We have many success stories as human beings. We have turned so many things around in this world for the better before, ecological disasters included. Boston Harbor is one of them, once considered one of the dirtiest harbors in all of America where nearly all of the fish suffered from liver disease because of 500 million gallons of wastewater contaminated with human waste that emptied into it every single day. It's now considered one of America's greatest ecological achievements. Thousands of people worked together to actually clean up the harbor so that people can just, again, swim safely in it and eat the fish that they catch. With God's hand in it, the harbor continues this day to rejuvenate itself. What was once considered a lost cause is a reason for us to celebrate the success we dream of that are still ahead of us. And right here in Wisconsin, these success stories continue to happen. Well, we may currently have quite a few Superfund sites. We have also already cleaned up nine of them in Wisconsin and are well on our way to continued success in this effort. As a community, we have stepped up to make sure that we are atoning for humanity's sins of destroying God's creation. We have again claimed our God-given roles as caretakers of the earth. The second creation account in the book of Genesis wants us to realize this deep truth about ourselves and our place in the world. We have been created in the image of God, children playing and creating in a sandbox, bringing life and joy just like our creator did in the beginning. And we need to get back to that creative and joyful and youthful mentality, co-creating and having fun in our God-given responsibility to care for this world. That child is still in us. I feel mine every day. And we shouldn't be afraid to get some dirt under our fingers once again and take hold of that divine power shared with us to leave this world God's sandbox better than what we found it. This is what God is asking of us. This is what God has been telling us to do since the very beginning. Amen. Please join me in singing our hymn of the day, When Peace Like a River. Please rise. Satan shall bob through trial should come. Let this blessed assurance come.
With the whole church, shall we profess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the people. United in the hope and the joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of rebirth, the good news of your resurrection brings refreshment to a weary world. Following the woman at the tomb, empower us to boldly share your radical love through our words and our work. Hear us, O oh God, mercy is great. As you breathe your spirit into the disciples, breathe your spirit of healing upon all creation. Nourish the earth with sufficient rains. Strengthen us to encounter the effects of pollution and destruction. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. You prepare the disciples for their ministry by calming their fears and granting them your peace. Equip our community leaders Give them a spirit of peace in hearts that burn for justice, that their leadership reflects your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You come among us in unexpected ways. Send us to those who hide in fear of question of your love. Be a healing presence for any isolated by addiction, incarceration, mental illness, chronic pain, sickness or grief, especially Larry, Lori, Tizzy, Carol, Angela, Dan, Beth, Gerald, 
and all those we name in our hearts and on our lips. Hear us, O God. As you met the disciples on the road to Emmaus, show us your presence along our journeys. Bless our doubts and questions. Provide trusting and safe relationships for all ages to nurture our connection to you and one another. Hear us, O God. Resurrecting God, you bring us to new life every day. Thank you for blessing us with companions on our faith journey, especially those who now rest in your love. Strengthen us with the eternal peace of your promises. Hear us, O God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share a sign of peace with your neighbor. We continue with our offering. Please be seated. Please rise. Since the feast of victory for our God, hallelujah, worthy is Christ, the Lamb who was slain, the blood set us free to the people of God, power Strength, honor, honor, and bless. 
generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. With joy we praise you, gracious God, for you created heaven and earth, made us in your image, and kept covenant with us even after we fell into sin. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our Lord, who by his life, death, and resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we join our voices with all the saints and angels in the whole creation. We praise your name and join their unending hymn. O God most mighty, O God most merciful, our rock and our salvation, hear us as we praise. Call us to your table, grant us your life. When the earth was a formless void, you formed order and beauty. When Abraham and Sarah were barren, you sent them a child. When the Israelites were enslaved, you led them to freedom. Ruth faced starvation, David fought Goliath, and the psalmist cried out for healing. And full of compassion, you granted the people your life. You entered our sorrows, and Jesus, our brother. He was born among the poor. He lived under oppression. He wept over the city. With infinite love, he granted the people your life. The night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you, for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering his death, we cry out, Amen. 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 Celebrating his resurrection, we shout, Amen. 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 Trusting his presence in every time and place, we plead, Amen. 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 O God, you are breath, send your spirit on this meal. O God, you are bread, feed us with yourself. O God, you are wine, warm our hearts and make us one. O God, you are fire, transform us with hope. O God, most majestic, O God, most motherly, O God, our strength and our song. You show us a vision of a tree of life with fruits for all and leaves that heal the nations. Grant us such life the life of the Father to the Son, the life of the Spirit of our risen Savior, life in you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you. Please be seated. Our ushers will guide you forward for Holy Communion this morning. With the communion assistance, please meet me at the altar. Number 515.
Hymn number 604, our O Christ, our hope. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Amen. Please join me in singing our sending hymn, The Day of Resurrection.
Go in peace. Serve the risen one. Thanks be to God.